Good morning and welcome to People Online. This time we intend to do a series on HR analytics. The scope, however, is restricted to the very basics with an emphasis on applications, particularly those kind of applications that require less resources to run and perhaps can be best described as low hanging fruits. Session 7 Predictive Analytics for predicting attrition. Content. We would be covering what is predictive analytics, forecasting attrition, and predicting the risk of attrition. What is predictive analytics? Predictive analytics advocates using HR data to acquire greater insight about the future. For example, analyzing attrition data for a few consecutive years, computing the trend and forecasting what attrition would be like in the coming year. One of the more popular application areas in predictive analytics would be predicting attrition. At a base level, predicting attrition would entail a forecast of attrition figures using trend analysis. In a more evolved state of analysis, it may involve use of tools like discriminant analysis or logistic regression analysis to compute the probability of churn employee-wise. Forecasting attrition. The method rests on assuming a linear relationship between attrition and time. So we could come up with a regression equation y equal to m into t plus c where y is the attrition in year t and uh, m and c are constants. Attrition data for several years can be plotted to form a scatter diagram. Subsequently, a straight line can be fitted using the method of least square. Forecasting attrition and illustration. Attrition data for 11 years is presented in a table. It starts from year 2008, attrition at 26 and it goes right up to 43 in year 2018. Now, can we use this data to predict the attrition in 2019? The answer is yes. Let's see how. Statistical framework. Now, what framework do we use here? For predicting risk scores, it is not hard to see that the outcome variable ought to be categorical. 
We can look at two categories of employees from the standpoint of risk of separation, high risk and low risk category. In this situation, when it comes to choosing a statistical framework, there are two options available. A. Discriminant function analysis and B. Logistic regression analysis. Discriminant function analysis. Here the objective is to set up a discriminant function. The discriminant function would be a linear combination of the independent variables. Needless to say, the dependent variable which is the function is categorical. The independent or predictor variables are continuous. So the discriminant function analysis can be represented as d is equal to b0 plus b1 into x1 plus b2 into x2 plus b3 into x3 and it goes on to let's say bk into xk where d is the discriminant score bi is the discriminant coefficient and xi is the predictor variable and k the number of predictor variables logistic regression analysis Logistic regression is similar to and in fact competes with discriminant function as a means for analyzing categorical dependent variables. Here also the logistic regression would be a linear combination of independent variables. But the independent variables could be categorical or continuous. Now this makes logistic uh, regression more versatile. The term logistic regression is reserved for dependent variables that can have only two possible values, say for example one for married and two for unmarried. For cases where there can be more than two values, for example one for high risk, two for moderate risk and three for low risk, the term multinomial logistic regression is used. The logistic regression analysis can be presented as ln p by 1 minus p which is actually called the logit value is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into x1 plus beta 2 into x2 plus beta 3 into x3 and it goes on to beta k into xk where p is the probability of the desired outcome beta i is the regression coefficient and xi is the predictor variable and k the number of predictor variables Discriminant function versus logistic regression. So here we've tried to do a comparison. The similarities between discriminant function analysis and logistic regression analysis are as follows. We can see three similarities. Number of dependent variables, one in both cases. Nature of dependent variables, categorical in both cases. Number of independent variables, could be multiple in both cases and the dissimil dissimilarity happens to be one I think one major dissimilarity nature of independent variables necessarily would have to be continuous or matrix for discriminant function analysis whereas for logistic regression analysis uh, these could be matrix and or categorical sampling Random sampling of historical data would be used to pick up a sample that would have two categories of people coded as 1 and 2. Those who left during that period can be categorized as 1 and those who stayed back may be categorized as 2. Once the sample has been identified, data about the subjects can be obtained from the HR records. Result. If the independent variables are only matrix, discriminant function analysis can be used. If independent variables are categorical or a combination of matrix and categorical, logistic regression is to be used. For either case, the independent and dependent variables should be filled in for each subject from the chosen sample. The discriminant function slash logistic regression would then get ready. The discriminant function or logistic regression would then be used to predict the stability of employees by filling in the independent variables from the HR records of each one of them.
This discriminant function slash logistic regression can be used taking the help of SPSS or any other equivalent statistical package. An illustration. A large Indian corporation researched attrition amongst GTs, that is graduate engineering trainees. The researchers identified 10 predictor variables, some categorical and some matrix. Logistic regression was used to carry out the analysis. The predictor variables included gender, location, secondary marks, class 10 board, class 12 marks, class 12 board, graduation marks, academic institute, whether the subject was a postgraduate or not, and the source, basically the institute the candidate had been sourced from. The regression is given below. So the p-value was computed for all prospective GETs, that means fresh applicants for the position of GET. The details were fed into the regression equation using their application and biodata. So for each applicant, the p-value was computed. If p was more than 0.5, then the candidate was likely to stay back and was categorized as low risk from the standpoint of possible attrition down the line. Summary. So in this particular session, we've covered what is predictive analytics, forecasting attrition, and most importantly, predicting the risk of attrition. Thank you for watching. If you could relate to the video, if you found it to be useful, do like and share. Do subscribe to our channel. Press the bell button to stay tuned in for our next video. Until then, goodbye.